So let me say this. You know, I'm not even going to lie. Okay. Back in the day, what I used to do, you know, when we had beepers and our cell phones, you know. Of course, you know, I had to tell different lies because I was pimping back then. Hello, love bugs. If you have not already done so, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you do not have a retirement and or investment plan in place through your employer, please check out the Acorn app below. It will change your life. Now, let's talk about Roxanne Shantae's unsung episode. My bad guys, I didn't do it last week because it came on last week, but I just didn't have time to do a video on it. So I'm gonna do the video on it now, right? And the reason why I'm doing it is because Roxanne Shante meant so much to me as a teenager that I had to speak on it. Oh, right? I, she touched on certain things, but I think because she wanted to make it PG, she didn't say some things about it, but I'm, I'm, I got you, Roxanne. I got you. They had some appearances by Biz Marquis, um, Yo Yo, Big Daddy Kane, Sparky D, and um, those people were all significant to my childhood because I love old school hip hop. Okay, I had the pleasure of meeting someone from the Juice Crew uh, recently. And I was highly impressed with him. One of the people that spoke, like I said, was Biz Marquis. I'm not quite sure why and how he ended up in our area. I don't know if he moved to like Laurel or uh, whatever the case, but I always thought that he was from the DMV. When in actuality, I just checked his Wikipedia and it says that he's from uh, the New York, New Jersey area, right? I don't know why, like even not too, like five years ago, I just seen him at the Walmart in Laurel. I don't know why, you know, but eh, that's not my business. But anyway, what Biz Marquis said was that uh, Roxanne Chante was the greatest female rapper, hands down. Right. The fact that she can freestyle off the top of her head, that is frigging amazing. You know, not people, many people can do it now. A lot of people say they can do it, okay? A lot of people say they can do it, and that shit just don't be making no damn sense. Uh, shout out to uh, Lil Wayne, but eh, I'm sorry, you know. So let me say this, you know, I'm not even gonna lie, okay? Back in the day, what I used to do, you know, when we had beepers in our cell phones, you know, of course, you know, I had to tell different lies because I was pimping back then, okay? But what would happen is the dudes that I like, I would tell them my name was Roxanne because I just thought that Roxanne was the sexiest name for a girl to have, you know? And then your nickname would be Rocky. Ooh, that wasn't her name either. She took on Roxanne in response to UTFO's Roxanne, Roxanne. Child bang, but we'll get to it. What was said was that her success opened doors for other female rappers. Very true. Even though I love Shaw Rock, I love the way she rapped, I love the way she delivered, I loved all those things, she was not the person to kick down doors for the female rappers. Another thing that I didn't know until I seen the Netflix documentary and Netflix child, girl, Roxanne, I was mad because I didn't hear none of that old school music. Sometimes that's what can make or break a movie. The music that encompasses the era can, you know, help to put you in that frame of mind. And when they did not allow her music or any of the other music around that era to be played, I was very disappointed, you know, but I'm gonna leave that dead and walk away from it. I, and like I said, I didn't know that she was actually a uh, freestyler because that takes extreme intellect. That's why I have so much respect for them battle rappers down there to the Queen of the Ring or the URL. And well, let me say this, and even still with them, it's not many that can freestyle and do good. Like Gaddis from Queen of the Ring, I don't even know if she's still doing battle rap. I don't know, but Gaddis, she's a freestyler. She does good. 
A lot of those girls practice. But according to Roxanne Shante, you know, she made a good coin off of this. Okay, at first it was, you know, a couple of hundred. Then she said she would battle some people for 1500 I said, God damn, she was making more money then than what some of the girls from the Queen of the Ring say they make now. She also considered herself the pioneer for the Queensbridge projects. And you know, that's where Nas came from. She considers Nas to be her little brother, okay? And I, I knew that from the Netflix documentary too. Right. I'm not shocked of her accomplishments or her intelligence at 14 years old, right? So at any rate, she was talking about how she was influenced by Nipsey Russell. Bitches, listen, listen, bitches. I didn't say Nipsey Hussle. I said Nipsey Russell, okay? You know, slide some oil to me. Let it lubricate my mind from the whiz. If you bitches know anything about your culture, okay? But Nipsey Russell, bitches. Nipsey Russell. She liked the way that he would make all his words rhyme. So that's how she picked it up. Okay, now I say Pimp's been doing that for years. Was Nipsey Russell a pimp? Was he ever pimping? I don't know, but you can't, I mean, you can't put nothing past them niggas back then in the 70s, okay, the 60s and 70s, okay? But uh, all that shit is pimp talk to me. Now, okay. continuing on when I talk about how, I'm gonna have to take these glasses off, y'all. What she said was at age 11, she started battling, okay? At first, it was. $500 per battle, then it went on to $2,000 per battle, which helped at home, child. Hmm. Like I said, uh, in projects, sometimes children are forced into, um, you know, uh, leadership roles. She also talked about how her mother had some alcohol issues, even though in the 80s, the drug of choice was crack. That wasn't her mother's drug of choice. She chose alcohol. And sometimes what happens, I'm not sure what her placement was, but I'm just going to say just general, I always tell you this, that the oldest daughter, you know, whether it's in the project area, whether it's middle class, however it is, it just always seems that the oldest child always takes on the responsibility of the mother. You know, um, I think that's something cultural about us that will never change. She also talked about how when she wasn't making money, battle rapping, her ass was making money, boosting, until she got caught, okay? At 12 years old, she went to a group home. By 14 years old, she was a runaway. And one day, when she was in her house, the story we've heard a 100 times, Molly Marr yelled out the window, was like, hey, you, ain't you the little girl that be down there taking all them dudes' money? Yeah. What about it? I need you to come up here because I need you to respond to UTFOs. Roxanne, Roxanne, uh, I want to be your man. Uh, Roxanne, Roxanne, uh. She went up there, she did it just like that. Marley Marr was impressed. He said, oh, yes, girl, I need you. By 1984, there was a response because the dude, Mr. Magic, uh, was affiliated with Marley Marr. Mr. Magic, I need you to put this on the radio. Mr. Magic says, show, sure, motherfucker, I got you. Daddy Kane came on and said that UTFO felt a certain kind of way because they just got dissed by a 14-year-old. Roxanne Shante became the first female rapper to have a number one hit. Within a year, Roxanne Revenge had 100 responses. Let me tell you something. I didn't know what the hell was going on with all them Roxanne bitches. I ain't even gonna lie. I didn't know. I'm like, who is Roxanne? Is that bitch wrong? I ain't even gonna lie. It was so many Roxanne bitches out there. I didn't know who them hoes was. I didn't know what was what. I was so confused about what the hell was going on here. I was like, wait a minute. I thought the Roxanne, Roxanne girl was a little chubby, looking like she Dominican with long at first and then cut it in the back. Girl, it was a money-making situation for the real... Is it the real Roxanne? That was the light-skinned one. Child bang. Anyway, it was a money-making situation for Roxanne Shante because she started to travel to battle rap these girls. And you knew she was going to crush them. Anybody that can off the top of their head freestyle, you're done. Sparky D. Ooh. Sparky D, girl. I don't know you. Oh. 
I don't know, Sparky D. You kind of AJ been too good to you. You know what it is? Just take the weight out your face. I always tell you, you know, whenever you got weight in your face, you always look older than what you do. Okay. But then wait a minute. How old is Sparky D? Is she like 60s? I don't know. I don't know. Sparky D, girl. I'm telling you, them red bones. Listen. Listen, I'm about to be, this is jealousy coming out of my heart, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm admitting, this is jealousy, because back in the 80s, you know y'all was the shit, okay? Sparky D, you know y'all was the goddamn shit back in the 80s. Them Negroes treat your, treated y'all like y'all was per royalty, okay? And your vagina was pink, just like mine, okay? Whenever I see them motherfuckers age badly, I be like, yes! Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites dust. Anyway, Sparky D was the one that was, oh, oh, all her trials and tribulations in life. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Sparky D put it in her music, you know, because at 14 years old, there were some situations for Roxanne. I mean, all I can say is just, man, Sparky, she hit below the belt. Okay, she hit below the belt. But that's what battle rapping is about. That's what they do. I mean, they dig up your dead dog. They talk about your dead mammy. Uh, they talk about your car on three wheels. They talk about your cat. They talk about everything, girl. Your teeth, everything. Oh, another that's thing that I was quite disappointed in her about was that Roxanne Shantae dropped out of school. You know, I guess she felt like, why drop out of school when, um, you know, I'm making so much money on the road, child. I did that in college, child. That's why it took me longer to graduate because I was like, shit, I'm making all the money in the world now. But then when you look back at it, you realize, damn, that's all I dropped out of college for? Just that? That's not no money. The real Roxanne, okay? Yeah. So anyway, this girl named the real Roxanne, oh, she was nervous. She was clutching her pearls. Oh, no, that goddamn Roxanne Shantae is after me. I don't have a balls to battle rap that lady. I can't do it. So what Roxanne Shantae did was she followed her around. And every time that hussy performed, she was right there. Uh, sir, hey, how you doing, sir? Let me get that mic. Here we are at 1985. And I really don't think that the uh, Netflix movie showed this. But here we are. She was in the great battle. She was up against this dude named Busy Bone. Because, you know, like, remember them kung fu movies like Into the Dragon? You got to fight this person and get to the next round. Whoever wins, go to the next round, and, and, and so on and so on, right? So she went all the way to the top and got next to Busy Bone, okay? Now, the situation was Roxanne Shantae was in her feelings because she felt like, clearly, I won. She probably did, okay? But... What Curtis Blow could not accept is that a female rapper would be the person who would represent hip hop. So what he did was he gave her the four because they were graded between one and 10. And it was, I think it was five judges. Curtis Blow gave her the four that defeated her. Or that caused her to lose against Busy Bone. What's his name? Oh, Busy B. Why am I talking about uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony? My bad. Later mm -hmm. on, she spoke with Curtis Blow and he apologized and said, I just could not have you to be the representative of hip hop. It would have uh, changed us. <sighs> I don't think, I, at that time, I don't believe that hip hop was strong enough at that time to have a female to represent them. You know, some of you bitches gonna be mad at me. You know I don't never give a fuck. Yeah, let's talk about some things that they don't speak about, okay? So you know how a lot of people are so appalled that, you know, older men are messing with young girls. Now I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm gonna be honest with you all. And you all, hey, you know, like whenever I had this conversation with my wife, it's, uh, she's a Virgo child. She always, you know, highly critical, you know, always passionate. And I'm looking like, bitch, it's not that serious. In the 80s, it was different. You know, like I'm not going to bash any man that was older than me that I willingly got with especially knowing what his positioning in regards to the hood could do for me. So um, 
at this part right here, she said that she got into a relationship with the older drug dealer. Okay, now this is the part that maybe people don't want to hear, they don't want to talk about, they be like, oh, nay, this is wrong, eh, eh, eh. okay, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, now we're going to talk about what happened in the relationship, but in this part, I just need you people to be grown and open-minded when I have this conversation. When you are a young lady in the hood, okay, or, you know, project area, whatever it is, you know that there are drug dealers everywhere. And at the time when you are 14, 15, 16, whatever age you are, you're not looking at him for his age. You're not even thinking about asking, well, how old are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is, can you get me to the next level? Can okay. I achieve all the things that I want in life? Why? Because as a young person, we're sold the dream that a prince is supposed to come along and give us all these you know, material items. Now, it's Cinderella on one aspect, but on the other, in the hood, it's a drug dealer. It's a prince in Cinderella on one aspect. That's what I'm trying to say. But in the hood, it's a drug dealer. So when it comes down to me judging her for being with an older man and choosing to be with an older man, that's just synonymous with what happens. When you are in relationship with a drug dealer, you're not even really thinking about, oh, how old are they? We don't care. That's a question that we don't ask because if you don't ask it, it's not a bother. Sometimes we know that a person is older uh, just because of just being around in the neighborhood. But when I was 16, I was messing with a, a very large drug dealer that was 26. It's okay. never a problem until it's a problem. So when Roxanne Shantae said that she was 14 years old messing with the older, a much older drug dealer, I didn't have no concerns about it. Now you have some people that'd be shocked and appalled about that situation, but that is synonymous with the hood, you know, because like I said, we all want that dream. It just doesn't come in that Cinderella Prince package. Sometimes our dreams come in, you know, trap queen slash drug dealer type package that is going to take us away from all of our worries. You know, so when you are the oldest daughter and you've been put in a situation where you have to do motherly things, that child is no longer 14 years old. When you start doing things and you're taking care of the household, then God damn it, Mentally, you're old enough to do Women it. don't have a problem with uh, the age differences in certain situations. And, you know, Robert is being one of them. And it's because we knew that we willfully got into these situations with these men because they knew, we knew that they would take us to the next level. I'm going to leave that dead. Some of y'all might be mad at me. But, hey, look. You know, I know that when I got out of high school, shout out to Theodore Roosevelt, Uptown, honey, that's me. But shout out to, uh, to Theodore Roosevelt, but I knew when I got out of school, I wanted a 300Z anniversary outside waiting for me. I didn't want to walk home. I didn't want to be like the rest of them little girls. She went I on to talk about uh, she loved the fur coats, the Audi that she drove, but then those fur coats turned into black eyes, you know, and it wasn't until uh, she went into the hospital and she was severely broken down, you know, that um, she had to get out. She had to save her and her child. They talked about that more in the Netflix documentary that, you know, she realized that she needed to leave that situation for her and for her baby yeah, because you don't want your son to see you get your ass beat by your daddy see that's another thing there are also situations where you get into it with these older men and they be fucked up okay and you be like i can't take this shit i can't take this i didn't play that you ain't gonna put your hands on me shit i got the rest of my life to live after she left that situation with her old abusive baby daddy, she went back on the road with the Juice Crew. Roxanne and Shantae had a performance, and one time, you know, the venue or the promoter was being real petty, wouldn't allow Roxanne Shantae to set up her equipment, and Biz Marquee came in, beatbox, did what he was doing, you know, spitting in, ha, 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 and all over the place. 
you know, and then the dynamic duo, they still got it popping, even without the, you know, turntables and everything like that, because what she said was that, uh, you only got 30 minutes. The DJ was like, 30 minutes? This is going to take me 30 minutes to set up my stuff. Biz Marquis was like, get out of the way, girl. Then she moves on to talk about the bridge wars. This was the Bronx versus Queens bridge. And this was all about who was the originators of hip hop. I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't up north. I was in D.C. Now, I done had a couple of them New York drug dealers because, you know, sometimes they would come down to the uptown, okay, and sell their work down uptown so you know me. You know, whenever I smelt money, being the young and tender, you know, young lady that I was, okay? And then, you know, KRS-One, let me tell KRS-One, you know, he did something called The Bridges Over That Rap. I had no idea he was talking about Roxanne Shantae. Lit. Being from the Big Nose Crew myself. KRS-One, I respect you. You know, you're a good person. You know, I think you feed the children. You know, and on your day off, you feed the bunnies. You know, and you watch butterflies and listen to the ocean sound so you can go to sleep. But okay. you are not the nigga to be talking about anybody. Because this right here, right here, is, is, is frightening. No. So now I don't like you no more, KRS-1. I don't like you. Now, I learned this uh, a while ago, but I was like, what, 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 what? what? Roxanne Shantae, the response, have a nice day. Shut him right. up. So Ooh. then we move on to 1987 where Roxanne Shantae collabed with Ricky D. James. Don't forget, y'all, I am doing the uh rick james glow book recapping and review and we closing it down y'all we we closing it down we winding the book up okay so my patreons i need y'all to help me to pick the next book so anyway roxanne shantae collab with ricky james you know ricky james liked them 17 and sexy but i know damn well you know, Roxanne Shantae ain't won none of that motherfucker. He had on a whole 20-inch lace front, okay? Don't nobody want no man with no 20-inch lace front on his damn mm, hunching all over her and sweating all over her. Don't nobody want that. So we can rest assured that Roxanne ain't hunched him. Now, Roxanne, if I found out that you hunched Rickety James over there on the Lucy's rap, I'm be mad at you. So at this point, she's working with a label now. Okay, and what was difficult for her is that she had to turn into something that she was uncomfortable with. You know, you're dealing with the MC who they want to turn into, you know, this hip hop, this female hip hopper. Okay, and that's not an easy thing to do. She's not the regular, you know, girl that we love. Like I, like I said, I love Roxanne Shante. You know, she's wearing heels now. She, you know, she's trying to come off, you know, sexy. That ruined it for me. You know, I've always been, like, I'm not a tomboy at all. But you would think because of the way I dress and how I'm not trying to, like, show my body a lot that I, you know, was a tomboy. But back in the 80s, you didn't require that to be sexy. You didn't require to show all these things to be sexy, you know? She's working with the label and she doesn't feel like she has the label support at all. And she didn't, she didn't because she wasn't those things that was marketable. And they said that she uh, cussed too much. Anyway, here we are in the 1990s. Uh, Roxanne Shantae is dealing with the new up and coming female rappers. And she said she felt a bit of animosity. Now, her and Yo-Yo had cleared the air, okay? But it didn't stop Roxanne Shantae, now 18 years old, going after all the new and up-and-coming hip-hop artists, uh, well, female hip-hop artists, in the song Big Mama versus Everybody. Uh, I don't know what it's called, versus everybody. But anybody. Big Mama addressed Queen Latifah, Moni Love, uh, one of the Roxanne's, salt and pepper, yo-yo, and -yo, now yo-yo is baffled because she's like, girl, I thought we was good. Roxanne Shantae said, girl, it's just hip-hop. It's just hip-hop. But you know, yo-yo don't really get all that because she's not a battle rapper. If she would have came from the battle scene, then she would understand that that's just a way to sell music. Beef sells, period. Down here, even on the YouTube, beef 
themselves. People want to see controversy, you know, so that they can get their mind off their problems, you know, and think about jokes. We all know that Roxanne Shantae eventually left hip hop. She said that she left bitter. One of the reasons is because her manager, Tyrone, ain't give her all the money. Tyrone say, well, shit, if, there, if we ain't getting no money, how can there be money? Roxanne say, where my motherfucking money, okay? She say, even still to this day, she going through problems with that nigga trying to get her money. Girl, Roxanne, girl, that money gone, girl. Gone. If it was a part of the 80s and the 90s, he either, you know, smoked it up, you know, snorted it up, spent it on some bitches. Or did something, girl. That money gone, girl. I wish that you all the luck in the world with getting it, but that nigga Tyrone, he ain't got your money, girl. He ain't got it. Here we are in 1993. She walked away from everything, and she is living in Newark, New Jersey. In 1995, she had her daughter, and she's doing odd jobs to make ends meet. Now, she's with a local, so she wasn't broke. We're not going to pretend like her ass was broke because that's not the case. But anyway, in 2009, what happened? And I was a, one of them, too, because, child, I started spreading that news, too, because I was so proud of Roxanne Shantae. But she became a keynote, a keynote speaker. And a rumor had started that she had had a Ph.D. I even said that. I even was like, damn, she, yes, girl, yes, bitch. Yes, bitch, do you tell hip hop to, you know, oh, oh, oh. She said that was a rumor. She, she did not get in front of it to stop the rumor. She let it go. But eventually she apologized to her fans for letting that rumor uh, get out in the universe. Yeah. In 2006, she had breast cancer. Did they say that in Netflix? In the Netflix thing? I don't think so. But anyway, in 2006, she had breast cancer in 2011. In 2011, she had a full recovery, okay? So now she is, she creeping back into hip hop and I am so happy, baby. I am so happy that Roxanne Shantae is back on the scene, you know, giving us what we need, okay? Ooh, and, I, and she let her hair grow back. Ooh, beautiful. Ooh, that hair was so beautiful. So in 2015, Netflix approached her. In 2018, Netflix, Netflix uh, released Roxanne, Roxanne. So in 2017, she met her dude, Jabbar Ali. They were married, and now what she does is she's like a big sister to the girls of New York. She's like a, actually an advocate for the young girls of New York, and she has a mentorship program that's called Mind Over Matter. Like, I'm very impressed with Roxanne. Roxanne, if you have a look at this, I don't know. But um, I think you're a wonderful person, you know. And then when I was young, I wanted to be you. What you want to be when you grow up? You want to be a ballerina? No. I want to be Roxanne Shantae, okay? I didn't even want to be the light-skinned girl uh, from Salt and Pepper. I didn't even want to be her. I wanted to be bad like Roxanne Shantae. At any rate, lovers, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And okay. always remember this. The same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. You have a good one.